Hello, boys and girls. Welcome back to Reading with Miss Weinberg. Today we're going to be reading the next book in our series of The Boxcar Children. Um, this one is The Mystery of the Hidden Painting. So this is the next book in our series. This is grade level second and third grade, guided reading level O. And the genre is mysteries. So let's go ahead and get started. And we are on the mystery of the hidden painting. So who's excited? So I flip the page, I see our contents page. It tells me the chapter numbers. We have nine. It tells me the name of each chapter and which page they start on. So we're gonna start with chapter one, birthday plans on page one. Chapter one, birthday plans. The Alden children, Henry, Jesse, Violet, and Benny ran out of their grandfather's house laughing. They raced each other to the nearby gardens with a fountain in the middle near where the boxcar stood. Henry, who was 14 and the oldest, reached out of the boxcar first and pulled open the door. Jesse and Violet got there next. At the same time, they turned and watched six-year-old Benny puffing in the hot August sun to catch up with them. It's not fair, Benny said. I'm always gonna be the youngest and never win a race with you. Someday you'll be Henry, Violet said reassuringly. Though she was only 10, she often seemed more considerate than many older people. The children climbed into the boxcar, followed by their dog, watched and looked around. Phew, Benny said, it's so dirty. Henry got the broom Jesse had made when they had lived in the boxcar and started sweeping the floor. We haven't been in here in a while. That's why it's so dusty, but I like it anyway. Jesse smiled and spoke in a voice that she used when she wanted to sound older than 12. Remember when we ran away and lived here when, after mother and father died? I think I can remember every day. Remember how we hid from grandfather? Yes, said Benny because we thought he was mean and wouldn't like living with him. And look how wonderful and kind he is, Violet said, and how happy we are with him. That's why we're here, Henry said, because we love him and we want to plan him a wonderful party for his birthday next month. We have a lot of work to do then. Let's get started, Jesse said. It's awfully hot in here. Wait, Benny interrupted. First, let's eat. I'm hungry, Violet finished for him. She reached into the basket she had brought with her. Mrs. McGregor packed a little snack for us. Jessie went to the shelf that held the dishes they had found and used when they lived in the boxcar. She took four cups, but Violet said, we only need three. I brought Benny's cup from home. I couldn't forget Benny's cup. Benny took a cracked pink cup from the basket and held it out. Henry lifted out spice cookies and a carton of milk and filled Benny's cup. Jessie took peaches and plums and put them in a bowl. Then she piled bananas on top of the fresh fruit. The boxcar was exactly the same as it had been when the children had lived in it, except that Mrs. McGregor had given the children four plump, bright colored cushions so they could sit on them on the floor. Now they got comfortable and chewed on the delicious cookies. Well, Jessie asked, what should we do for grandfather's party? So it looks like they're all back in the boxcar and they're trying to figure out what they're gonna do for someone's birthday party. Do you remember whose birthday party they're talking about? Good, Grandpa's birthday party. Well, Jesse asked, what should we do for Grandfather's party? We have to have a cake and ice cream, Benny said positively. You can't have a birthday party without a cake. I'll help Mrs. McGregor bake the cake, Jesse said. No, I'll do that, Benny shouted. Violet laughed. I knew you'd say that. Well, I'll play the violin for Grandfather. So we have all of the brothers and sisters sitting around. They're drinking their milk, eating their cookies and their fruit, and planning out grandfather's birthday party. I'll be glad to do that. I'll have to think about what to play, and I'll decorate the dining room, Jesse said. I think I'll write a poem, Henry said. We were studying poetry in school at the end of the term. I'll be able to put what I learned to good use. We have to buy him a present too, Violet said. What should it be? Model cars, Benny said. The other children laughed. Henry said, I saw grandfather looking at a sweater in the Barlow's men's shop last week. I think he'd like that. We could all chip in and I'll buy it. I don't have much money, Benny said. 
thoughtfully. I won't be able to pay my share. We'll work it all out, Benny. Don't worry, Jesse said, pan patting his shoulder. Violet suddenly jumped up. I know, let's dress up for the party. You mean I have to wear a tie? Benny said mournfully. No, Violet said. I mean, dress up like in costumes. There are all kinds of old clothes in the attic. We could use those. It would be like a masquerade. Grandfather would love it. I know it. That's a wonderful idea, Jesse said eagerly. Henry made a face. I don't know. Dressing up is sort of childish, don't you think? No, Violet and Jesse said at the same time. Come on, Jesse grabbed Henry's hand. Let's go up to the attic right now. I know you'll like dressing up. Oh, so they've decided that they want to do a dress up party for grandfather's birthday, but it looks like Henry is not in agreement with the girls. They ran back to the house and into the front hall. Watch raced after them. Mrs. McGregor came out of the kitchen with flour on her hands and nose. What's all the excitement about? Where are you all off to in such a hurry? We're going to the attic so we can find dress up clothes for grandfather's party, Violet said, catching her breath. What party? What's this all about, Mrs. McGregor asked. We'll tell you later, Jesse shouted as they all ran for the stairs. Open the windows up there. It must be a hundred degrees in the attic, Mrs. McGregor called up after them. Upstairs, Jesse pulled open a window. Phew, Mrs. McGregor was right. It's really hot in here. Violet was already poking around. She found an old big straw hat and tried it on. She ran to a standing mirror and giggled at her image. It's just right for you, Jesse cried. It's lavender, your favorite color. Henry found a velvet coat and slipped into it. How about this? Benny had opened a trunk and was pulling out old toys, blocks, balls, and a jumping rope. And a jack in the box. Hey, I like it up here. I'm glad we came. Jessie was now standing silently in a corner with her back to her brothers and sisters. Violet looked at her. What did you find, Jessie? Slowly, Jessie turned around. In her hands, she had a small painting in a carved gold frame. Look how beautiful this is, she said. Violet put down her hat and moved towards Jessie. Oh, you're right. She is beautiful, she gasped. I don't think I'd ever get tired of looking at it. What do you guys think it is? Let's make some predictions. If it's in a frame, maybe it's a picture? Or maybe it's a painting? Hmm, let's find out. The painting was a lovely young woman in an evening gown. Around her throat was a necklace of sparkling blue sapphires that matched her eyes. The woman was staring out of the picture with wide eyes, and she had a small smile on her red lips. She looked very happy. Who do you suppose she is? Benny asked. Henry moved closer to the painting. She looks like the pictures grandfather has shown us of grandmother. <gasps> looks like there's a picture. So Benny, Violet, Henry are all looking at the picture they found. You can see the sapphire necklace. But those pictures were of an older lady, Jessie said. Well, Violet said thoughtfully, this could have been painted when grandmother was much younger. But if this is grandmother, why is the picture hidden up here? Henry wondered. Benny shrugged. Why don't we ask grandfather? He'll know. Grandfather always knows everything, Jessie laughed. Benny, you always get right to the point. So that's the end of chapter one. So let's do a little recap. So these four siblings, Henry, Jesse, Violet, and Benny go to their box car and they have some treats. They have some cookies, some milk, some fruit, and they're talking about what they're gonna do for grandfather's birthday. And they ultimately decide that they're gonna have a dress up party. So they go to the attic and they're trying on stuff when they find a picture or a painting of a woman. And they all are guessing maybe it's grandmother, 
but they don't know because she looks young and grandfather only showed a picture of grandmother when she was a little older. So they've decided they're gonna ask grandfather who this picture is of. Hmm, I wonder what's gonna happen in the next chapter. The next chapter is called The Painting. So that's a little foreshadowing of maybe what the chapter will be about, the painting. Hmm. Well, I've had so much fun reading with you guys and I can't read, wait to read chapter two with you. Have a great day. Bye.